You're listening to Language Nerds Do Earth, the podcast about linguistics, culture, travel, and how they're all connected. Now it's time for your language nerd hosts. One in China, one in Spain. It's Patrice and Rachel. Everybody, I'm Patrice and I'm Rachel and this is Language Nerds to Earth. We are on episode number 21. Yeah, and today we are in well, actually, I'm not, but you are in a different place. Yeah, Patrice is not in China today. <laughs> I am actually I'm in Tennessee, which is where Rachel and I grew up actually. Yeah. So I am I'm visiting family. I'm on a two-week trip around the US. The maximum amount of time I stay in one place is two nights. So we're like visiting nine different cities in two weeks, including 24 hours in Beijing on the way back. So I'm That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so tired. It's fine. I'm also extremely jet lagged. <laughs> I mean, what is it? 12 hours? 13 hours? It's 12 hours now. Yeah, it's 12 yeah. hours. So it's just like, like you said, Rachel and I were talking earlier. And she was like, wow, you're really doing a, like a total flip of your day. It's exactly what it is. Like a 180. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, they say with jet lag, your body adjusts one hour per day that you're in the new place. So I'm away for 14 days, which means I'll have like two days where I'm actually in this time zone. Yeah. And then I'll go back to China. I'll be real though, when I did the 12 slash 13 hour change, my body hated it so much. And I think it, like, it really took me like three weeks. Yeah. (laughs) To not just like fall asleep at like nine o'clock. Yeah. Three, I totally hear that. And it's not just being tired, it's also my digestion was so weird when we first got here. I would wake up just completely starving. Like, (laughs) five o'clock or three oh, thirty wow. in the morning. And then like by the afternoon I haven't even eaten that much or maybe I have, I don't know, like everything's so weird. But then by the afternoon, like I don't want to eat anything. But then the afternoon is when all of your relatives feed you. So yeah, I would wake up at five thirty and just demolish an English muffin with avocado on it. And then I would have like lunch because it's I'm either super full or super hungry. <laughs> and then in the afternoon, Seth and I were at his parents' house, and around 6.30, I would be obviously taking a nap, and his mom would come in like, hey, it's time for dinner. Like, no! <laughs> oh, it's a really hard one. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, that's where I am. Rachel's back in Spain from your trip to Germany. Mm-hmm. So today we're actually going to talk about being scammed, which is one of my favorite topics. Yeah, you know, I was telling you just before, I didn't really think that I knew any travel scams. But then when I was reading, I was like, oh, yeah, I know a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you haven't been victim to them yourself, you've probably seen it happen or Mm -hmm. heard about it happening. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some examples of being scammed, and then we'll talk about some general ways to avoid it. And Mm -hmm. then we have a Lost in Translation story from JT in the US. Yeah. So before we get started, we've got some language news. Yeah. This language news was actually sent to me by my aunt Patty, who we interviewed her for the expat lifestyle episode. I believe that was number 15. Mm -hmm. But she sent me this language news about a language in Myanmar. And I said, oh, cool. We'll have to do that for our language news one day. And she said, that's really good because this group of people needs all the coverage they can get. Mm. So if you don't know anything about the history of Myanmar, don't feel bad. I didn't know know much about it either i did know it was kind of like a complicated (laughs) history i did a little bit of research before we started so it was formerly a british colony and actually it was like the second richest economy in southeast asia or something like that when it was under british rule but Mm. then they were granted independence from the british in 1948 
as a democratic nation, but then there was a coup d'etat in 1962, so it was a military dictatorship for about 50 years. When the military junta was dissolved in 2011, and so they've been kind of trying to get back to a democracy, but there's a lot of corruption and violence still going on in the country. Apparently in 2017 there might have been a genocide there, so it's still very complicated. Yeah, this is something I feel like I did not learn about enough in any of my education so like you know what was happening in cambodia with the khmer rouge like i think it's kind of similar yeah almost to that just like ethnic cleansing and yeah yeah but anyway that's the history of myanmar so when you are trying to do an ethnic cleansing of sorts a lot of times you get rid of other languages which that's something that's very common actually in france like i think something like 32 languages were just wiped out in a generation in the early 1900s and also the irish language when the british occupied ireland that was wiped out so when you're trying to get rid of a language, you make knowing the language a burden on the next generation. So that's what happened here in Myanmar. Everybody's encouraged to learn the same language, and if you don't, then you're victimized. So how do you do that? You make it a crime to speak the language. So Yeah. Well, actually, in Spain, too, yeah. Catalan was illegal to speak under Franco. Yeah, and all of the other languages, yeah. Yeah, but especially, I think especially Catalan has undergone a revitalization. Yeah, actually, that was something I learned when I was living in Barcelona. Part of the reason that Catalan survived so well is because it was the language of the bourgeois. Mm -hmm. But here in Myanmar, we have the language of the Shani. The Shani are a subgroup of the Taishan people. They're in Myanmar's southern Kaichin state. I don't, I'm probably saying that completely wrong. In the northern Sagaing region? Yeah, so they all kind of live around this lake, right? And it used to be the spoken language, as we talked about, as an ethnic group, but it was made illegal and it's currently undergoing also a revitalization yeah. effort. So it used to be illegal to speak this language in Myanmar, but since 2000, 2014, Myanmar. Mm -hmm legally recognized the teaching of ethnic languages so people are starting to bring it back for the same reason that we've discussed in a lot of other episodes you know when you learn a language you learn a culture and they're trying to keep their culture alive these people who weren't allowed to speak their language for like 50 years basically under the military dictatorship yeah and it's amazing that it's yeah. really survived to this extent and so the younger generation who didn't necessarily grow up speaking it have learned it and now are passing it on yeah it's like the millennials of myanmar looks like who are doing it basically yeah, yeah. which is really so cool. cool apparently there are like 100 shani teachers cover 150 elementary schools in this region which is more than double the previous year so it's really picking up steam it's a happy ending yeah language review yeah. I feel like. Yeah, it's very cool that they've been so successful so far. We'll see. We'll have to keep an eye out to see yeah, exactly. how it's going in the future. Didn't we do... Oh, yeah, we also did a language revitalization story last week. Yeah. <laughs> Go Shani population with your language, which is... Yeah. Shani, the local dialect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... It's time to get into the episode. Yeah. Rachel found this great list of scams. I have a great mental history of scams. But first I, a <sighs> I asked some friends on Facebook just to kind of... Crowdsource. Yeah, crowdsource. Thank you. Some scams. And one friend reminded me of a Chinese scam that I have heard about. I haven't been victim to it, but she says this. Some of our friends were scammed in China. They were approached by someone who said she wanted to practice her English over some local Chinese tea. She took them to her favorite local place, and after a couple of cups, the friendly Chinese lady said she forgot her wallet and asked if they could pay for hers. They said, of course. She left, and my friends got a $700 bill. 
Two burly men came out of the woodworks and wouldn't let them leave the restaurant until they paid. Which is, yeah, I mean, variations of this scam happen all the time in China. Like, especially people who look like they don't know what they're doing. They get approached by, it might be like two beautiful Chinese women who are like, hey, let's go like drink at a bar together or a KTV or something like that. KTV is like the karaoke rooms in China. Or... Or somebody might bring you to a tea house, or they might, yeah, in any case, they bring you somewhere. You have a drink with them, a few drinks, whatever, and then they leave for some reason. They, like, go to the bathroom, or, you know, I forgot my wallet, whatever. And, yeah, they leave, and then you're presented with a bill, and it might be, like, thousands of dollars. (laughs) And that is a really, really scary scam, because then you're, like, trapped in a room with people who are, like, give me money yeah that's actually very terrifying that it could be several hundred dollars that might be all that you have traveling or if you're on a trip like you've budgeted a certain amount it could be all of your budgeted money (laughs) yeah exactly so actually it reminded me of my biggest travel scam story which i don't know that might not be in the list either seth and i were in nepal and we wanted to get to know the city so i'm like getting to know the city i'm like talking to locals and like kind of just asking people for information i'm not like making myself really available to them but then somebody comes up to seth and starts talking to him and seth sees me like well patrice is getting information i'll be helpful too so he starts talking to this dude who keeps talking to seth and i'm like stop stop talking to him and <laughs> the guy was like he he just kept talking and he's like oh this guy's just being friendly and then the guy's oh. like hey i can show you around the city and like kind of take you to place to like temples and whatever like hidden temples in Kathmandu and we're like Seth's like yeah yeah that'd be great and I'm like what does he want and Seth's like he's just friendly like an hour and I'm like Seth what does he want and he's like he's just friendly and the guy overhears us talking and he's like oh I don't want any money if you could buy me some groceries though that'd be really great and so like we're like I guess we can buy you groceries that'd be fine and oh yeah and he's like and and for my baby sister you know my baby sister is like two years old it'd be really great if you could buy groceries for her because she's hungry whatever and um so we yeah yeah he kept talking about his baby sister so after another hour he's like okay you know i showed you a lot of things could you buy me some groceries we were like sure and he takes us to this place it's like a little hole in the wall where you tell these dudes what you want and Mm -hmm. then they give it to you and then they present you with a bill and the bill was 120 us dollars which is not a real grocery bill in Kathmandu. Like, nothing costs that much. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we were like, that's kind of crazy. And so we had him put some stuff back, and we paid $60. But, like, that and the Chinese scam teach you, do not go. Whenever you are with a local and you want to hang out with them, fine. But you choose the place. Right. And just choose, like, a totally random place. Don't let them have any say in it, because... This guy was in cahoots with the restaurant, just like that person in the Chinese story was in cahoots with the bar or the tea house or whatever. Yeah, probably getting a commission. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, he didn't even keep the groceries. He just, like, split the scam money with them, I'm sure. Probably. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's a pretty big theme in a lot of these is you pick the place. Yeah, exactly. Well, okay, one that happened to me. It wasn't the worst scam. I mean, we didn't have to pay a lot of money or anything. But in Morocco, in Marrakesh, I had already been told, you know, be careful when you're out and people try to, like, take you places and recommend stuff to you or whatever. So we were already aware of that. And I was with my friend and her boyfriend. So there were three of us. And we were walking. We were trying to find something to eat around lunchtime. And we were kind of in, like, a an area that had no restaurants, really. And this guy starts talking to us in English. And we we're like, no, no, thank you. And he was like, oh, no, I'm not selling you anything. We're like, no, thanks. Like, whatever. It doesn't like we yeah. don't want whatever you want <laughs> smart but then he's like no no like he just keeps telling us about some quote festival the tanning festival that's happening just this weekend like very exciting what? and a tanning festival <laughs> like tanning meat or tanning hides 
Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> Not tanning body. <laughs> no. And so he's like, oh, here's my friend. He'll, He's here, like, just by coincidence. Like, he'll take you there. We were like, we don't want to go. <laughs> and... Uh, long story short, several times we just tried to walk away, but he always came and, like, rounded us up, and we were just too awkward uh, to say, like, you know, f*** off, like, get lost. So, in the end, we ended up going to these tanneries, which, personally, I had zero interest in. They hand us, like, a bunch of mint each. And we were like, no, no, we don't want this, like, thinking we have to pay. And they're like, no, you need it for the smell. Like, uh. (sighs) And it was just, it was filthy. It was, like, very disgusting. And as a vegetarian, not something I was interested in seeing. No. And after stepping over, like, a knee-high pile of guts, I was like, we have to leave, like... I am not staying here. So we're like, let's just hand the guy like five bucks and leave. And so we tried to do that. And he was like, oh, no, no, no. This is an association. It's five each. And so we're like, ugh, so annoying. So (laughs) it's an association. Yeah. So, okay. We ended up paying like five euros each. It's not Mm -hmm. the end of the world, but it was very annoying. And. Yeah, and just especially because made... like because like you had no interest in it, and he basically just forced you into it. Yeah. So lesson learned: just be rude and like stand your ground. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's like a main point: is if you feel like you're getting scammed, be rude. Don't be afraid to be be rude because it doesn't feel like they're being rude because they're very good at manipulation. That's their job. Yeah, yeah. But they are being rude to you, so you can be rude back. <laughs> yeah. And I think especially like coming from you know the Western ideals of being polite and being kind and not being rude, mm-hmm. we were way too soft with him. So. <laughs> Right, exactly. I think that is something, like, on one hand, traveling makes you more empathetic and, like, you understand things more and you feel like you can, like, you know more about some places where people might need help or whatever. But on the other hand, it also hardens you. And when you can sense a scam coming your way, you're like, no, go away. Yeah. I don't want, don't want your rosary or whatever you, whatever you're trying to give me. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, so let's get into your list. Uh I love it. (laughs) So Rachel found this list on expertvagabond.com. We will put it in our show notes. Mm -hmm. But first we have a broken taxi meter. Always negotiate your taxi rates ahead of time or insist on a meter. And if you can't get them to turn on a meter, then go to a new taxi. Yeah, don't be afraid to get out or you know walk away from the guy yeah i tell them before i get in the cab where i'm going and then i'll either see that they have the meter on or they'll tell me how much and by that time i know how much it should cost to go from one place to another and i know if they're trying to rip me off yeah it also helps if you do just like a quick google search like how much does it cost to go in a cab from the airport to my hotel Mm -hmm. and That's a good point. I mean, most places it should be listed, like a range at least, you know? Right. A lot of times when you book a hotel on the hotel's website, it might tell you how much you should expect to pay. Yeah. But, I mean, at the airport, that's another whole thing. Always get in the official taxi line. Right. There's always a taxi line. (laughs) Yeah. There's always a real taxi line with, like, official taxis registered with the city. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always going to be, like, guys coming up to you, like, hey, do you need a taxi? Do you need a taxi? Like, don't go with those ones. <laughs> Official taxi. Yeah. Another one, also usually done by a cab driver. So it's about the overbooked or the closed hotel. So if you get in your cab and you, the driver says something like, oh, that place is closed or, oh, that place is no good, like, and offers you a suggestion to go to another one, don't do it. Make sure that they take you there because they're going to take you to a much more expensive hotel and they're going to get a good commission from that. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, that's never happened to me, but... Yeah, me neither. Yeah, like, your taxi driver has nothing to do with your hotel, so... Yeah. Don't do that. Another one is the 
free quote unquote bracelet slash oh rosemary. rosemary. Okay. I've also had this done with like like a lay like flower necklace. Yeah. In Nepal. So somebody like just puts it on your body. Yeah. For free. And then they're like, Oh, now you owe me money. Mm-hmm. When this happened to us in Kathmandu, these guys were like, Hey, happy Happy festival day. It was actually a festival day. And he, they put these necklaces on us and like they put a bindi on our forehead and they were like, okay, give us like $10 or $20 or something like that. And we were like, what? And so we were totally new to the scam scene and we started ruffling through our bags and somebody passing by goes, don't give them money. It's against their religion. And these guys' faces just dropped. <laughs> they were like, no. <laughs> And we looked at the other guy who was also scamming us at the time. And this was during our walk around the city with the scammer. And he was like, yeah, it's true. It's against their religion. You can buy them food or something. And we were like, okay, we'll buy them food. We like bought them some cookies or something. And they like walked away sadly. Ah, interesting. The one with the rosemary is really popular in Madrid. I've never heard of this. What happened? So they give you like a sprig of rosemary for like good luck. Yeah, so it's always what people call um, the gypsy people. Prefer to be called Roma, I believe. So yeah, certain areas, especially in Madrid, they hang out and then they give you, they're like, here, this is for good luck and blah, blah, blah. And then you take it and then they demand money from you. And it's... Super annoying. Sometimes it also happens with flowers, something like that. It's really annoying because it's hard to not accept it because they're really adept at just like putting it in your hand. Yeah, that happened with a rose, with roses in Italy. Yeah. To us on our honeymoon. Yeah. I don't think that it's happened to me, but I know of people who it's happened to. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, they're so good at it, right? They're, like, super friendly, and they're like, hey, I'm in a good mood, you're in a good mood, here's a free thing, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. And what happens, at least in Madrid, is, like, if you don't pay them, or you don't, or you try to give it back or something... They just, like, make a huge scene and, like, start screaming until you give them money. <laughs> they start screaming? Yeah, like, causing Holy a huge shit. scene just wow. to embarrass you so that you'll just give them money. Oof, that's so weird. Yeah. Have you seen it happening? Yeah. It mostly happens, like, either to tour. Yeah, it mostly happens to tourists. I'd say most people who live here probably know know about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Crazy. Another one is when somebody spills something on your clothing and then they help you or they, maybe they'll team up like with somebody who accidentally spills something on your clothing and then somebody else helps you as a decoy while pickpocketing you. Somebody, I asked my friends on Facebook and she said somebody squirted fake bird poop on her and uh, another person was like, oh, here, let me help you clean that up. And they were trying to take her purse, but something happened and everybody ran away. Like maybe the police were like around. Okay. Yeah. So she got lucky. Lesson here is just clean those things yourself because yeah. somebody's just trying to distract you while they get something more valuable. Mm hmm. Yeah. This one was pretty crazy. Fake police officers. So yeah. That's scary. It showed a picture of them and they look they looked very legit. So what could happen is like somebody on the street offers you drugs and then these quote unquote police officers then approach you, ask for your passport and your wallet, and obviously they're not real police officers, so they would just steal those things. So basically, yeah, just never even if you think it's a real cop, you can always ask for identification. You can always call the police to make sure they're legit. You don't have yeah. to hand over definitely don't hand over your wallet and you shouldn't <laughs> hand over your passport either. You can always say like your passport is uh locked up in your hotel safe or something, ask if they'll accompany you back and if they are real police officers, they w should do that and if not then just leave. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we should make a caveat, like, these things don't happen that often. Yeah. But actually, in our episode on travel mishaps, where uh, Rachel's mom was talking about things that have happened to her because she's ADD, she she also said, like, 
I've never had somebody just like take advantage of me while I'm traveling. And she's been, she's traveled so much, but I think like there's a difference between just like being aware of where you are and watching out for people who are overly friendly or offering you drugs or whatever. Don't do drugs when you're traveling. Especially, especially when you're traveling, yeah, because <laughs> the laws are different. You don't know the culture. You don't know, you know. Yeah. And then there's a difference between that and then just being super trusting of everybody around you, you know? Yeah. And yeah, as much as both you and I have traveled to, like, we've been scammed just, you know, a few times. Right. It hasn't been like a major problem when we're traveling. It's always like, oh man, they got me. Right. You know? And then you move on with your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not to sound paranoid. That's a good point. Yeah. But. I mean, if you're aware of these things, they shouldn't happen to you. Right, exactly. Another one we have is when somebody with a local with perfect English tells you that what you're looking for is closed. Like if you're trying to find something and you're looking around for it and then they take you somewhere else where you have to pay a lot. So yeah, if you're looking for something and somebody says, oh, that place is closed, Let me, I'll take you somewhere else. Just don't go with them. I think part of the problem is when, like, you are overwhelmed and you don't speak the local language and somebody with perfect English starts speaking to you, your brain kind of relaxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can always go to the place yourself and find out if it's really closed. Right. They might use an excuse like, it's a religious holiday or it's, I don't know, under construction or something. Mm -hmm. But just go check or ask somebody else. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I mean... Especially tourists are really good at being found by these people. <laughs> <laughs> or these people really know how to spot a tourist. Even if you blend in with the population, if you don't really know where you are, they will know. Yeah. So it's another reason to like get really familiar with the map of where you're going before you're before you venture out. Yeah, that's a good point. So another one is if you're at an ATM, you might find somebody who's trying to be friendly and offers to help you with um, avoiding paying local bank fees, mm -hmm. but they might be using a skimmer to get your card information. They might also be watching your PIN as you're entering mm -hmm. it. So I think that's a good rule of thumb anywhere, at home or in another country. Just yeah. don't let people be near you at the ATM. Always cover the keypad and, you know, if somebody's getting too close behind you, just go to a different ATM or something. Yeah, exactly. And always use ones that are at a bank. Mm -hmm. Instead of, right, that's something that we also learned from your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way you're going to avoid ATM or local bank fees. If somebody says they can help you avoid local bank fees, they're lying. They can't. Yeah. Or if they want you to transfer them money so they can take it out of their account, my God, don't do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's a, such an obvious scam. Um, don't worry. <laughs> um, the next one we have is child beggars. Don't give children money, number one, because behind the child, there is always an adult who is using the child to beg for money. And I don't want to support that practice people are more prone to give like a sad child money or like a disfigured child oh it's the worst but um actually yeah. the scam that happened to us in nepal a few weeks later we were in cambodia and a kid comes up to us he's like i want some milk and we're like okay we'll get you milk we're gonna take you to that store over there because <laughs> We had learned our lesson. And he was like, no, not that store. Come over here, over to this store. And I was, we were like, nope, we're going to take you to that store and we're going to buy you some milk at that 7-Eleven. And he was like, no, no, no. And he like really tried to change our mind. This is like a 10-year-old. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to do what you want us to do, kid. And eventually, after a few minutes of him trying to convince us, he was like, ma'am, you and he walked he like walked out in the opposite direction we were like whoa very clearly a scam yeah exactly it was it felt good though to make a scammer angry even if it was a child <laughs> yeah and actually the article said you know like a lot of gangs will use beggar children to get money mm -hmm. from tourists so you might be funding gangs so 
Or, yeah, I mean, in addition, it might just be an adult watching where your money goes and then they might pickpocket you after. Right. I mean, children were naturally programmed to let our guard down and want to help children. But yeah. It's as much as it hurts. Like, I might give somebody money if they're like playing an instrument or they come up to me on a wheelchair and they want to like sell me their artwork. Like, I don't have legs and I made this artwork and I'll be like okay I'll buy art from you or I'll Mm -hmm. give you a dollar or something but if there's a child following me Cambodia was the worst there's like a three-year-old following me for five minutes one time like trying to sell me a bracelet he he just kept repeating one dollar please one dollar please one dollar please and I was like (sighs) wow actually in Russia we were in Yekaterinburg with my choir and near our hotel there were lots of beggars Mm -hmm. and probably Roma people actually and when we would leave the like go into the hotel or leave the hotel they would pretty much swarm the group and kind of just like try and grab stuff or actually one of the kids he was like I don't know six seven probably he like grabbed onto my friend's arm and like wouldn't let go and he like literally like lifted him off the ground (laughs) oh my god yeah amazing kind of crazy So, moving on, the group photo offer. So, somebody comes up to you and offers to take a picture, and I think you can see probably where this is going. They instead take your camera. Um, So, it's sometimes better, especially if you have a really nice camera. Mm -hmm. You want to find somebody who looks reliable and ask them as opposed to having someone offer to take Mm -hmm. your photo. And you might ask another tourist who also has a camera and then you can trade favors. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. It's never happened to me. No, but I always kind of wonder. I'm like, okay, if I give you my... I mean, it's not that I have a really nice camera or something, but I use my phone, which is an iPhone. And so I'm like, if I give you my phone, am I going to get it back? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Always just ask a passerby, usually other tourists. Yeah. Because those are the ones who just want to go on with their day. And like, usually I'd say like, trade a photo for a photo. Yeah. I'll take your picture, you take mine. Yeah, for sure. Another one is fake Wi-Fi hubs. So it can be tempting to connect to an open network, but that might be set up by hackers. So always go if you're at a cafe or something, the cafe will have like a Wi-Fi. Usually they'll even have the password like up on the wall. Like here's their here's our Wi-Fi, here's the password. And if not, then all of the people working there will know. So yeah. one tip here is to use a VPN. Mm-hmm. I use a VPN that I pay for in China, but there are a lot of free VPNs you can use also. Just like download an app. And then when you're connected to a place where you aren't familiar with the Wi-Fi, just turn it on. Mm-hmm. It's really easy. It works on the computer and the phone. A good one for Apple products that I've used that's free is called VPN Plus. Okay. I use Viper and Nord VPN in China, which I pay for also. Okay. Yeah, this is a good one and one that I haven't been that careful with in the past, actually. But Mm -hmm. I haven't run into problems that I know of. (laughs) Right. Well, you probably haven't connected to a lot of, like, open Wi-Fi things, too. Usually not. Usually, actually, I just forget to connect to Wi-Fi, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and if your phone has data, then that's not a problem. Right. This is one that I didn't know about, but it's very interesting. So this is rented motorbike damage. So if you rent a motorbike or a scooter or something it might be damaged or stolen and it might have been done by either the owner or a friend and then you have to pay for the repair some things that you can do to prevent this from happening take some pictures of any damage there might be before you leave so you can Mm -hmm. prove that some damage was already there or don't tell them the real place that you're staying that way they can't steal the motorbike Use your own lock. Don't use the one provided then because the owner might have another key. And if there is any damage that happens, see if somebody else can give you a recommendation of a shop, not necessarily the one that the owner recommends because he might be in cooperation with that shop. Yeah. 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 This something similar happened in Korea, actually. 
Oh. Um, my mom was visiting and we took a cab from the bus station that she came into to our apartment and she was taking her suitcase out of the back and the cab driver was like, you scratched my car with your suitcase and we gave him 20 bucks, but I don't think we scratched it. <laughs> I think, like, we were just, like, kind of panicked in the moment, but afterward it was, like, cab drivers carry suitcases in their trunks all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, of course, even if we did scratch it, there were probably a few other scratches on there from other people's suitcases or whatever, because that's their job, is to transport people and their stuff. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't pay that much, but... Yeah. It's annoying. Exactly. So I th- I think that's a good idea. At least, like, if you don't think about taking pictures, just do a mental scan of the vehicle or of the motorbike before you start using it. Yeah. Is everything okay? Does it look okay? Yeah. Yeah. Another one is fake tickets. Somebody might offer you fake bus or train or plane tickets, or a cab driver might offer to take you to his friend who's a travel agent. Always buy tickets from official ticket vendors. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm always a little wary if somebody says like, oh, I have a friend and they'll get you a better price or they, you know, sometimes it can work like for sure. But be careful what, yeah, what you're buying or what you're hiring because it might very well be kind of an association of scammers. Yeah. Well, and like official places yeah. are going to give you the real rates, you know? If you're buying a ticket to, I don't know, like a tour of some kind, and it's not like an official tour registered with the city or something, maybe like a cab driver will know about this tour and you can buy it. I've done that before. Like the cab driver was like, oh, I know I can take you around and show you this place. And I know like yeah. these people who offer this tour, like that's fine. It's not a huge deal. Like he probably makes a little bit of a kickback and the place that he knows, like he brought them business, but yeah. it wasn't like a ripoff. It was a nice little thing that we did. But <laughs> but yeah, like official things like mm-hmm. public transportation or whatever. Check yeah. Taxes. Let's see. So some kind of a good, imagine a local guy says like, oh, I buy these gems or these rugs or whatever it may be. And then I sell them for a profit in the US. And then they bring that up kind of like encourage you to get in on the business. But the items are probably fake. Mm -hmm. And another good rule of thumb is Mm -hmm. if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you're going to just make a huge, huge profit on this and it's just going to make you a millionaire overnight, that's probably not legit. Right. I mean, you might have like a really nice gem after that that you bought for a very good price. (laughs) Um, I haven't heard of this one, the fake hotel wake up call. Yeah, me neither. Apparently, somebody calls from the hotel in the middle of the night to confirm your card details, but it's really a scammer. So if that happens, you should wait until the next morning and go to the front desk in person. I wonder where that happens. It must be, like, more common in some places. Yeah, for sure, but I don't know where exactly. But, I mean, another just life rule. I mean, you shouldn't be giving out your card information so easily on the phone. Right. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, especially that's just another thing when you're in a foreign place and you don't know what to expect and your mind is like overwhelmed with new stimuli it can be really easy to let your guard down and be like oh okay yeah sure you need my current information you forgot to get it yesterday okay yeah here you go yeah and then suddenly you're <laughs> yeah just like i think that's the main thing about traveling keep your guard up Don't do it so much that you can't enjoy yourself, but watch out for things like that. Yeah. And flirtatious local women. So this one, Mm -hmm. I think it's mostly for for men, but a beautiful woman invites you out to a bar or to a club and you have like a probably a fun night, but they'll probably leave at some point and then you're left with a huge bill. Sort of like the right. Chinese English lessons. Exactly. It's like one version of it, for sure. Yeah. Or it said, in the worst case scenario, drugged and robbed. So. Oh, God. <laughs> and that's not to say, you know, don't go out with locals, 
but you shouldn't be paying for everything. It should be happening. You know, you're not yeah. racking up a tab or something. And if it's a really beautiful woman and that's out of the ordinary for you, you might also <laughs> look out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, especially white men, people look at them and they're like, oh, okay, that, that has money. And so they are very easily the target of people who might use their sexuality to target those men. Yeah. Yeah, good list. Very so helpful. just a couple other ones that I thought were pretty interesting. This one I've seen several times oh, man. in Paris. It also is in Madrid fairly often. It's pretty common in Europe, I think, which is a fake petition. And a lot of times they pretend to be either deaf or mute. Like the ones in, in Madrid and the ones that I've seen in Paris also, they didn't speak. They would just like point at the petition. And if you sign it, then they ask you for money. Like they demand so weird. a donation. It's really odd. Yeah. And... Actually, they're in one of the train stations that I used to go to a lot in Madrid. And when I would be walking from the bus to the metro, sometimes I would pass them. And I remember one time I was with my friend and she was trying to get us to sign it. We were just like, no. And she actually ended up screaming at us. What? <laughs> she was... Uh, like in Spanish, she was like, it's just a signature, girls! And we were like, thought wow. you weren't supposed to talk, but okay. That's so awkward. <laughs> and But like, that's what they make money off of, is like making people feel awkward. Basically. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are just like social pressure, like, oh, it's too awkward, so. Mm -hmm. Just, just, just like give... what happened with you in Marrakesh. Exactly, yeah. Another one to watch out for is if people give you the wrong change. Always count your change. Yeah. It's hard when it's foreign money, but people, the people behind you can wait until you make sure you have the right change. Yeah. And make sure that you try and get familiar with the currency either mm -hmm. before you go or when you first get there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, similarly, counterfeit money. This might happen in a cab, like you hand a large bill or something, and he hands it back saying it's counterfeit. But what he's really done is taken yours and switched it with a counterfeit one. So now you have a counterfeit. That sucks. Yeah. Another one is a fake ring, a uh, found ring. Somebody might ask if this ring that they quote unquote found is yours, and then they'll show you a mark to prove that it's real, and then you buy it, and then it's not real. Yeah. Gold or whatever. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. And apparently that one's pretty common, like in Paris and other parts of Europe, maybe mm. uh, Rome, I think, as well. Um, This one was interesting. This is in one of Rick Steves' lists. The talkative cashier. So somebody might be checking you out, but also talking on the phone. And while you're not paying attention, they might actually take a picture of your credit card. Oh, uh, okay. I see. So that's interesting. Another one, it's called the stripper. <laughs> yeah, so you might pass the, a woman who's been accused of shoplifting and she's yeah. arguing with the shop owner very like strongly and she's insisting that she didn't steal anything. And then slowly she starts taking off pieces of clothing until she's like down to her underwear, by which time the shop owner has probably disappeared and this is again probably aimed at men because mm -hmm. <laughs> the men who might have been standing around kind of watching have probably been mm -hmm. pickpocketed ah so it's like a whole team yeah that's so weird i can't imagine like i can't woman. either <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine that scene being natural at all either but <laughs> Like, I didn't take anything. Takes off shirt. I swear, I'm innocent. Takes off pants. Like, yeah. I, don't <laughs> I don't really know. That's also one of Rick Steve's, so. He's cool. He has a really good podcast, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Another one is being pickpocketed on the bus or the metro or the train. Um, friendly locals, people who bump you and 
grab things when we were in Nepal on the same day that we got scammed twice in the morning (laughs) we were in this huge crowd of people and we got pushed like the crowd moved it was the festival of the Kumari which is the child goddess Mm -hmm. actually if you go to our website under the watch section there's one video and it's of me and Seth traveling around Southeast Asia and one of them is that day the Kumari festival day the same day we got scammed and we're like there to celebrate the Kumari I can't even I can't believe we went out after that morning of being scammed. <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, we went to this festival and we're in this huge crowd of people and we're all really, really close together. I always keep like a purse that has one large zipper pocket and I grab on to the part that you open. So mm-hmm. that's like why I miraculously didn't get robbed in that crowd of people. Seth got pickpocketed though, because everybody was just so close together and he had yeah. like some money in his back pocket. And I did get fondled. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this guy just grabbed my boob. It's like so violated. We just like uh, After that so we gross. were like, Okay, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> we're done with Katmandu for the day. Yeah, just go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, especially in crowds, at crowded places like a festival or public transportation or something, that's mm-hmm. when usually pickpockers would take advantage or touristy areas that are very crowded. Yeah, I guess like a lot in Europe. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, pickpocketers are skilled everywhere. Yeah. I remember though, like especially Rome, Barcelona, Paris, mm-hmm. they're very, very good at their job there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You have to be careful. But that doesn't mean being, like, overly careful and just, like, clutching your bag and, <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm going to get, like, robbed at any yeah. moment. No. Put your valuables under under your shirt, under your pants. Whatever. Yeah. Like, in your underwear. Don't fine. keep your phone in your back pocket. I mean, no. I do. Th- I'm guilty of that. I do that walking around Madrid and then, but I'm just checking it, like, every two seconds. It's, like, a compulsive thing. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, having a bag that's a cross bag if you're a woman or a man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Not keeping your wallet in your back pocket either. Just those kinds Mm -hmm. of things. Apparently in China, they use these really long tweezers to, like, pick things out of people's pockets. Yeah. I've never seen it happening, but I've seen a video of it, like, on a train. That's insane. Like a back yeah. pocket, I assume. Yeah, like a back pocket or whatever kind of pocket, like if somebody's on the train, like everybody always is like just head in phone, nose in phone on the oh, train well. or whatever. So yeah. it's very easy to get totally engrossed in that. Miss your stop or mm. be pickpocketed. <laughs> so Yeah. Well, actually, when we were in Munich a few weeks ago, we were at, they have like a river where they have surfers or surfing. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see it from the bridge, right? Yeah, exactly. So we were watching it from the bridge and it wasn't that crowded, but I, and I like didn't know, notice that this was happening, but Amelia, my boyfriend, this guy bumped him from behind and then it was like, oh, sorry. And then just like stood really close behind him. And so he was just like (laughs) glaring at him. He was like, yeah back off yeah and i think yeah definitely he has more uh, a more heightened sense of like personal danger or you know awareness i think i have a pretty good one but his is yeah he's from venezuela (laughs) his is like 15 times at least what i've got yeah Yeah, i can imagine and then a few minutes later he told me what had happened and i was like oh I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, I'm pretty trusting of the people around me. But when I'm, especially when I'm in a new environment, I'm very aware of people who are standing especially close to me. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're in a place that's not that crowded and somebody's standing really close, it's like back off. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've talked about how body language is, we've talked about how personal bubbles differ across cultures. Yeah. But that doesn't give anybody an excuse to like invade your intimacy personal bubble yeah for sure and then what was this wrong compartment in india oh okay so in india apparently the trains are quite complicated and you can pay for like an upgrade to a different compartment but the person who was talking about it was saying that they had gotten in the wrong train compartment several times and then had to pay for an upgrade but random people might also ask 
tell you that you're in the wrong train compartment and then ask you to pay for an upgrade. So like saying they're from the train, but they're not. So his advice was to find out what the price for an upgrade was ahead of time. And like mm-hmm. the people who are actually from the train won't charge you any more than that. So uh, Okay, that's good to know. So should we give some just general advice, just a recap, I guess, of what we've yeah, I think already so. said? I think that's smart. Yeah. So yeah, number one lesson for me, because it was my biggest scam, is always choose where you go with locals. Mm-hmm. Cannot stress that enough. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, although that's not to say, like, if you meet somebody somehow naturally, and then they say, like, oh, I love this restaurant, let's go there, or they give you a recommendation, don't accept mm-hmm. it. But Definitely. if they're like, oh, let's, you meet them, and they're like, oh, let's go to this place, like together right now (laughs) right it's better if you can choose your own Mm -hmm. for me don't be afraid to be an asshole yeah or what you perceive as being an asshole just be really strong that's what i learned from my scamming experience which again was not the worst it's not the worst thing that could have happened but right just go with your gut and if you feel like somebody's being Somebody, if you feel like you're being scammed, especially, you're probably being scammed and just don't, like, do everything you can to not let it happen, even if that means being an asshole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if somebody's insisting on something, especially, then they are probably scamming you, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? Well, for me, also, you should, in order to avoid probably being scammed or pickpocketed, just look confident, look like you know what you're doing. And even if you're not sure, don't be like in the main square just wandering around looking like a lost dog or something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, get familiar with your surroundings before you like go out into the world. Right. And that's not to say you can't just wander around and enjoy. Of course you can. Mm -hmm. But don't look like completely lost and just be confident. That doesn't mean you have Mm -hmm. to be like with an iron grip on your possessions at all times. Mm-hmm. but Because <laughs> yeah. that yeah. also makes you pretty obvious that mm-hmm. you're not comfortable. Exactly, yeah. Something that your mom taught us was watch the locals. What do they do to avoid being scammed? Like if everybody is chaining their backpacks to the... The rack the on the bus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, like, keep your backpack on your lap and then fall asleep on a bus. Yeah. Or if everybody's wearing their backpacks on their fronts in the market or something and you're not, there's probably Mm -hmm. a reason that they're doing that. At the big market here on Sunday, everybody wears their backpack in front. Mm, Yeah, smart. One thing that happened to my friends when they were traveling through Italy, they had a really nice camera and at one point they were on a train and this guy behind them, they got to a stop and this guy behind them was like, oh, is this the right stop for me? Like, is this blah, blah, blah stop? And they were like, oh, I I don't know. And he just kept distracting them and everything happened so fast. And then as he was distracting them, somebody just took this guy's camera right off his lap and ran off the train. And, like, after they started moving again, they realized what had happened. They both, like, ran off together. Oh, no. Yeah, like, keep all of your valuables just, like, chained to your body. Even if it's... It doesn't have to be, like, with a lock and key and everything. Just, like, make sure that whatever straps that you have are, like, somehow attached to one of your limbs or your neck or whatever. Yeah. And, um... Be aware if you feel like your attention is diverted from your stuff. Somebody's cleaning something off you or somebody's asking you a question you don't know the answer to or something. Be aware of that because it's probably a ploy. Yeah. Well, not maybe not probably, but it's it could be for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to sound like, you know, super paranoid or like I'm thinking about getting scammed all the time. I don't think about it very often. Yeah, me neither. It's just something that you kind of have in the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. And if you kind of learn, I think, the different tricks or kind of what could happen, you'll be fine 98% of the time. Right, right. And you'll, I mean, you might be traveling and having a wonderful time and then somebody comes up to you and they're like, hey, let's go to a cafe. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember listening to that episode of Language Nerds to Earth where they told me not to go to a cafe that that a random stranger insists upon. So and then you'll you'll say no, thanks. And then you'll go on with your day. Yeah. So where you'll be very insistent not to, you know, be an (laughs) answer. 
Yeah, and also, yeah, just don't take things that are free most of the most of the time, unless it's you know sanctioned from a store or from a restaurant that's reputable. Or、mm-hmm. yeah, stick to things that are reputable. Don't take like random taxis that aren't registered, or go to a a random travel agency and buy tickets.、Mm-hmm. Try to stick more to official things. You'll be you should be fine in that case. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that's pretty much everything we've got for travel scams. That was a really fun episode. I'm yeah, glad we, I'm glad we covered it. Yeah, there、um, are some that are very clever. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is a whole industry. I actually was looking for stats on it, but usually people are scammed out of less than a hundred dollars, and in that case, they usually don't report it. So、yeah. it's hard to get a feel for how often it happens. But if you've traveled a little bit, then it's probably happened to you in one way or another. Yeah, and you learn. You learn as you go. Like. I had already traveled a lot before the one happened to me, and okay,、mm-hmm. I learned a、yeah. new skill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>、yeah. Actually, you know what I was thinking for the next travel episode? We could do like haggling. Ooh, yeah.、It's、something that、fun. I struggled with as well. Yeah. Ooh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, let us know if you have. Scam stories. You can leave us a comment on the show show notes or wherever you listen to this episode.、It'd、be really good to hear any other ones, especially if you've been scammed in a way that we didn't talk about. Yeah, or if you have experienced one of the ones that we've talked about, that'd be interesting too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's time for. Lost in Lost translation. In translation. <laughs> This week we have a story from JT who went to China. So I was with a group and we were all studying in China, and you know your normal greeting is、uh, ni hao, and、uh, or if you want to say are you good hao ma, but it's also the word for number. And this girl was trying to get my friend's number. And she kept saying "how ma" with the tones for, you know, your number. And he kept thinking she was asking if he was good. So he kept saying "how," like, "Yeah, I'm good." Like, "Yes, I'm good." Why did she, Why does she keep asking me if I'm good? So that went on for a while until we had a dictionary in hand to figure out what was going on. So that's it. There are a lot of stories that I think every. Foreigner in China experiences with the tones. Yeah, it's gotta just be so challenging to learn. Yeah, I mean, I think we're just not familiar with the concept as people who don't have tonal languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. So how is good, and how is numeral. So like one how is like it can be like the first day of the month or、oh. something like that. Okay. Well, thank you, JT. Thank you so much. <laughs> to submit your lost in translation moment, you can go to the contact section of our website and record your voice, or you can send us a voice memo to languagenerdstoearth at gmail dot com. Yeah. So wrapping things up, subscribe to our podcast. That way you don't miss anything. It's free, and you'll get the downloads immediately. You can get them as soon as they are released, which is usually every Thursday.、Mm-hmm. You can also follow us on social media. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. We usually just post stuff that is language and culture related. We put our language news on Instagram every week at the beginning of the week, and often pictures of our guests and ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and please, if you have a moment, leave us a review. It really helps a lot. Helps people to find us and increases our visibility. So if you're enjoying it, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave us a short little review on iTunes. Yeah, and tell your friends about it if you enjoy it, especially if you have friends who are interested in learning about other cultures or languages or who like to travel. That's usually a good way of of spreading the podcast is just word of mouth. Yeah, and we also sometimes write about our experiences living and traveling. Abroad. So, if you want to subscribe to our blog, you can also do that from our website, which is languagenerdstoearth.com.、Mm-hmm. All right. So, thanks for listening, and we'll see、yeah. you next time. Yeah. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.